Old. Let's see what's in it. Huh. What is that? Let's see what we got here. I hope to earn your subscription today. I hope to earn your subscription today. Well, here we go. Four in the morning. This is the freeway. Only four more hours to go. <laughs> Let's go get some gold. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flower Gold Wizard Channel. I'm Jason. That's Rigby, my mining partner. We're part-time gold prospectors based in Wisconsin. And if you take a look behind me, that there creek doesn't have any ice on it. Maybe just a little bit. But I've been waiting for this day for months and months and months. I'm so sick of chipping ice to get at some gold. It's been driving me crazy. Well, it's here. Now, last fall, late fall, I found a really good spot where we're getting 20 plus colors per pan. So we're headed up to that spot today, and uh, we're gonna see if we can't put a big put a big smile in a pan. Back in a bit. There he goes, chasing a bunny. <laughs> All right, we made it. Now I'm gonna show you guys exactly why we're working in this spot. Rigby found it. I do the shoveling. Well, here's a brief synopsis of this little area right here. Now, as you can see, this creek is coming down and around and there's a real tight inside corner right here. Let me put this camera in one and that'll show you a little bit better than that wide view uh, angle will. Now that material is coming down in here and in super high floods, it is coming down around this corner and crashing off of that bank. And hardly any material gets stuck on all those flat rocks there. It's getting pushed right up and over all that stuff right there. Those rocks go right down into the creek bed here. And it's a pretty tall order to have flower gold being trapped in that high of water flow. And as you can see, it pinches right off right here. And let me take a little walk down here. And then bam, right as the inside bend stops right here and the creek straightens out, there's this great big huge wide open area. Now look at the speed of the water right there. And then look at the speed of the water over here. You can kind of see it in all these bubbles over here. That gold is settling out in here for sure. And as I get down here and look at this, right there there's no ice underneath the water. And then right about there, the old crick ice, this is a little bit of melt water on top of it. The old crick ice is still underneath there. And then it comes down here where the crick gets a little bit narrower again. All that ice is gone from underneath there. Now I tested along this bank right here. That's the inside right there. And coming down and I did a bunch of testing right in here. And I did really, really well. Now you can see that there are cobbles down in this here area. I haven't gotten a shovel to see if I could get any of that, get through any of that ice. But that deposit goes all the way down in through here. And you can see all those great looking cobbles down in there. Oh yeah. I really tested out nicely here. So I'm gonna unpack my gear. We're gonna get busy. Back in a bit. Bucket, shovel, check. Classifier, check. Rigby's pink blankie. Check. <laughs> oh yeah. Sluice check. Pan check. Scoop check. Treats, courtesy of Secret Creek Prospecting. Check. All right, we're gonna do a test pan. Always test pan. Test, test, test. That's how you find the gold. That's how you stay on the gold. Let's do it.
Look at that. Look at that, I got that out of there. Nice. I think the rest of that's going to come out too. That's got a nice little pattern on it. Pretty cool. Splash. All right, let's pan it out and see what's in it. And here's that material right here. Now, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of clay in there, but I can tell by the color of that water that there's clay in the vicinity. So let me get working through this stuff just a little bit. Pull some of them bigger rocks out. And it looks like pretty decent material. I mean, there is some clay in that stuff, that brown clay that I usually do pretty well with. And it may be just a matter of getting down just a little bit deeper, who knows? Test, test, test. When I did test this area, I was finding it in that first foot or so, which would stand to reason that it would still be in the area in that first foot. And heck, maybe even more down a little bit lower than that. There we are, let me get some more of that big stuff out. This stuff pans real easy. And if I remember correctly, there is a pretty good amount of black sand in this stuff too. When we were here, I really wanted to come back bad, but it iced up and I just wanted to make sure I was able to move a really good amount of material down here because the gold was so darn good. And there is a deep, really good amount of black sand in there. Look at all that black sand showing up in the bottom there. That's, that's what we're looking for. That's a great indicator. All right, so I'm gonna pull that back, see what's in it. All right, it's not the 20 pieces I was hoping for, but it's still really good in my opinion. There's about 10 or 12 of them in there though. Pretty darn small. There's some even smaller ones mixed in this stuff here, as you can see, along with these here. But we'll go ahead and snuffer those up. But we're definitely in the right area. I might have to move just a little bit up towards the shore just a little bit because I was working right there pretty tight, maybe a foot off or so, and I just took a shovel out of, uh, where the heck was I? Right there, which is about four feet off the bank. So let me see if I can get some more of this ice up from underneath there, and we're going to keep plugging away. It looks like there's a good spot to set my sluice right there, so I'm going to classify a full five-gallon pail and run it. Snuffer, check. Concentrate container, check. Got it. Now for some of the guys out there watching the channel for the first time or maybe just recently, uh, this is my classifier. I call it Russell. For the rustling action it provides when I spin it around in a, in a circular motion like that. And what this does is it takes the larger material and separates it from the smaller material which I want to run through my sluice. Uh, if you run that larger material through a little sluice like mine, or any sluice for that matter, chances are you're going to wash the material out of those riffles, and out goes your gold. So I use this to try to keep all the material the same size, because the gold we find around here is so small, you really want to get that material down to the, a manageable size where you have a better capture rate. So I'm going to go ahead and start classifying it to my pail here. I've got this about three quarters filled with water. And we'll basically we we'll just shake out the big rocks and get to running. try to keep our videos fun and sometimes educational hopefully a little bit educational anyway here is such a tidbit right here now, as you can see this little tuft of grass isn't connected to the bank and it isn't connected to the other shore none of that it's just kind of right here in the middle well this bank after being chewed away after years and years and years has left this little patch of grass right here now, this little patch of grass says more than, hey man, I'm a patch of grass. It tells me that there's clay underneath there. This stuff here is growing in the clay. If that were just regular old forest mud like that stuff right there, it would be long washed away, 
and you never know it was here. But that's a really good indicator that there's a good layer of probably gray or real dense brown clay here. And that's always been a good sign to find and dig around because the gold sticks to that stuff real well. So we're going to get back to work. Back in a bit. Gold prospecting tip 3004. Check. Always pay attention to the material you're playing with. Let me get this back down. Bam. I've been shoveling and shoveling, and I've been seeing all the same types of gravels and kind of milky, clay-looking material all around it. And then I came across this, finally. Now we're down about a foot and a half in that hole, and I just now hit this gray, sticky clay. See that stuff right there? That's a score. Nothing's getting through that stuff. Well, there's probably there's gravels underneath it, but any float gold that's been coming down here over the years or whatever... Is getting stuck right on top of this stuff and all those gravels mixed in with it and collecting and concentrating gold, etc. And that's what we're after. So now that I'm down to that layer, I'm going to go just a little bit further so I can get my shovel and start going that way and skim the top of that clay and work all those awesome gravels, fill up this pail. Then we got to set up a sluice. Yuck. Prospecting tip number four. After you're done testing, test again. Test, test, test. Now we got some gold off the top layers right here. And now that we're down, we got a really good, good deep hole going right here. And it kind of fills in as we're going. That's down there a little ways. And we got down at some really good clays. So I wanted to see what the material had in it down deeper. And here it is. It's really, really good. That is all gold in there. And a, and a little bit bigger piece right there. Look at that nice flake. So there's well over 20 pieces. There's still a couple of pieces scattered in that stuff there. That was just a half a pan's worth right there out of that hole right there. <laughs> now I've got my pail about, ooh, I don't know, half full here or so. So we're getting pretty close to being able to run some over to sluice. But all signs indicate it's going to be good. Real good. Got it. Prospecting tip 77. When you're working with stuff with clay like this, never fill your pail all the way to the top unless you can run through it really fast. Now I've just got this small sluice with me today, but it's really, really effective. You just can't throw shovels fulls at a time at it. You're limited to smaller size scoops and that's just fine with me. I'm out here to have fun, not out here to get 40 hours in a week. So we got our pail of material up here. Now we just gotta select a spot here to put our sluice in. Now as you can see, a lot of this is gonna be way too much water and way too fast. Now I may be able to set it up over in this area right here and block a little bit of that water because there's plenty of pitch. There's probably dang near six to eight inches from there down to the flat water here. So that's not gonna be an issue. Or I could set it up right over there and just chip a little bit of that ice away and uh, I could basically get exactly the pitch and exactly the amount of water flow I want over there. It, it's all a preference game, so let's see what Rigby prefers. Well, turns out he prefers beef sticks. Prospecting tip, 17,403.24. Get to know your equipment. Now, I know my equipment pretty darn good. Now, I have about a half an inch of water coming over the top of the front edge of my slick tree right there. Oh, look who just showed up. I couldn't find him forever. Wonder why. <laughs> we'll have one. Give me a minute. All right, now, this particular mat right here, that is a VDR uh, Vortex Drop Riffle mat I got from Infinity Prospecting. That mat can take an awful lot of water and an awful lot of speed and still work just fine. And this mat right here is made out of silicone, and I've tested and tested and tested that, and that stuff works absolutely fantastic. As a matter of fact, it's silicone from there all the way up to the top. And we have just a little bit of pitch here. Now you're gonna find that with more water, you need less pitch and less water, maybe just a little bit more pitch to get the material to exchange. And the only real way to find out is to grab a little bit of that material and throw it on there. Then you'll find out exactly how your equipment is running. Now if we notice that that material did not just instantly wash off the top of there and as it's coming down it's getting caught 
and all these riffles and vortexes here and it's dancing around real nicely. That is exactly what you want. And especially in this mid mat right up in here where I'm doing all this up top where I'm doing the dumping. There's material getting caught in all this and all the way down and eventually all this brown material turn into black sand and gold and probably some garnets and other heavy elements like iron sand, etc. So I think we're running just right. You don't want to run too slow and you don't want to run too fast. And I think we're right in the middle. And this is going to be one heck of a productive day. That is guaranteed. Especially if we got lots of beef sticks. Rigby says it's snack time. Yeah, he needs that. He's a hard working miner. That's right. P.S. This here is a Camp America. Red, white, blue. That's right. Prospecting tip number two. Always watch your equipment. Now I've got about half of this here pale run. And look at the absolute chokingly sick amounts of black sand in this stuff. This whole sluice is just absolutely jam packed full of black sand right now. I've been watching this stuff as I scoop it on there. You can just see the black sand separate from this material once it gets down into this here area and that brown material has a chance to wash off. Look at that stuff turning dark colored right there on the edges. Just absolutely packed with black sand. What a great indicator. Look at the black sand just packing up in there. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to clean this baby out. It's really gonna be something. And then we're really gonna get to work. Prospecting tip number eight. Always listen to the mine boss. Mine boss says it's time for a cleanup. We've got that whole pail run. I've got some water in there. Basically all I gotta do is take this thing right here, lift it up and out of there, throw it in my pail, just like that. Give her a few splashes. We'll pan it out and see what's in it. Okay, okay. Prospecting tip 52. Never be afraid to take a little fiber. Especially on your pink blinky. <laughs> All right, we'll get that stuff in a pan. We'll take a little look at it. Yeah, it looks good. Not too much material, but it's heavy. Let's pan it out. Ooh, look at all that black sand in there. Man, oh man, it's gonna take me a few minutes, but I think it's gonna be worth it. Back in a bit. And the partial results. Now, I only say partial because there's a pretty good amount of black sand and I'm sure I washed some of that gold down and with that, I want to get to running here. The more material you move, the better. But look at the amount of gold we got here. That is one half a five gallon pail out of my good spot right here. Let me get that glare out of there. Hundreds of pieces for sure. Now you multiply that by 5,000 pails. Well, then you got a little something, but I'm happy with that. Extremely happy. That sluice is set back up already. It took almost two seconds to bend over and put it down. We're going to get back over there and fill up a whole bunch of pails and put a big smile in a pan. Let me snuff that up and we'll get to it. Got it. Now a little while ago, I had said you didn't want to have rocks and etc. going through your sluice because it'll mess with your system. And I'll give you an example. Now, all these ripples have a little bit of something in there. Now watch what happens when I take this little rock and I just put it next to that ripple right there. See that? All that material is gone. Gone. You do not want to have rocks like this rolling through your system and possibly stalling out, stalling out your mats like that. See that? All that material is gone now. Prospecting tip number I don't know, negative 12, another one. 
Another one. And we might as well have a little beef stick while Rigby ain't around. Uh oh. You heard me. <laughs> Prospecting tip 94. Never tell anybody your secret spots. <laughs> Here's here. Ryan just got out of bed. What is it, about 11? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Another one. Prospecting lesson number 17 trillion 301. Got to go with the flow. As the water level's coming up, my sluice was getting swamped out over there. So I just slid it right down here a little ways. Just kind of in an off, offshoot here. I'll back up, kind of give you the whole perspective here. See that? That's that was way too much water there now. So I just slid it over this little here little rock. You know we've got a good amount flowing through there now. Material's still turning nice and black. I just started this new fresh one here. I'll take a look at it. And off she goes. Alright, we're about to do another cleanup here. And what I've been doing is when you get down to the bottom there and you can't scrape the last little bit out of there to put on your sluice I always pan it out and here's what I got this time doing that I would say those are some pretty nice pieces of gold right there four real nice looking ones and just tons and tons of little pepper look at all those little fly flower gold right there that's just a little about a scoop and a half off the bottom of that pail so I'm going to run a couple more and then I got a couple of odds and ends I want to take care of before I leave Got it. Another pail and another slight adjustment. <laughs> God darn water just keeps coming up and up and up. It's supposed to get pretty warm today, so I kind of expected that. But we're going to make do. I've got a good amount of water rolling through there, but I have a lot less pitch than I had before. And that seems to be the ticket. Everything is rolling and rolling around in there. So I think this is going to be our last one of the day. We did fantastic. We're going to have a nice, nice pile of gold when we're done. We're going to get out of here and go check some stuff out. Back in a bit. L Snuffer Dump Oro. <laughs> it's pretty good. Now that's just the stuff that I take out of the bottom of the pail and I can't scratch out anymore to put on the sluice. And a few test pans here and there. We did fantastic. I still have... Where's that darn thing? My dog. I still have this whole jar of concentrates to go through. Now that sluice only kicks out about, I don't know, two tablespoons maybe of concentrate. And we've got a whole pile in here and it's loaded with gold. I can't wait to get that stuff home. So let's make the ride. Back in a bit. All right, let's get this party started. <laughs> That's next weekend's party. Well, anyway, I'm going to grab a little something out of the fridge of wonder right here. Ooh, it's really getting stacked up. Bam. I'm going to grab one of these. And we'll get this party rolling. I've got all my concentrates right here. I've got my cleanup sluice set up. All we need to do is turn that baby on with my speed controller. And we're running. Grab a scoop of this stuff here. Throw it on there. This is going to be really good. All right, let me feed that stuff through there. And we'll see what we wind up with. Another one. All right, that baby is empty. Got it all run through here. Let's take a little look. Looks pretty darn good to me. Let me see if I can get up. Up in there a little tighter, get some of that glare off there. Oh, the lighting in here is horrible. But I see gold all the way up in there with my, with my old eyes. And there is all kinds of gold that you guys can see too on this here camera. Let's take a little walk down memory lane one time here. Yeah, I don't see much down in there. Let me turn that down a little more one time. There we go. Oh, look at that. Now you can see some gold. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be good. All right, let me get it all in a pan. Dump my snuffer, we'll take a look at it all together. Oh, I tell ya, another one.
And here's all that material right there. I've got about 20 tablespoons turned down into roughly two tablespoons. And I'm already seeing some gold showing up on this edge here. I always get it to show up on that left side for whatever reason. I'll just do a quick little peek see here. And then we'll do some serious panning. Oh yeah, let me put that into three. And there's gold showing up all over up top there. All right, give me a few minutes and we'll get this panned out proper. We'll take a look at it. And there it is, all cleaned up. Right up next to a mercury dime, I've, you can see I've got some pretty nice looking garnets in there and one little teeny weeny piece of lead. But that's a really good amount of gold in my opinion. This is my favorite hobby and that's why. What a relief. We didn't have to go down there and chip ice all day long just to get a bucket of material moved. Uh, we got a whole big pile of gold in my opinion, uh, a lot of nice garnets, and we just had an absolute blast. Uh, spring and summer right around the corner, and we're going to be using all sorts of equipment this year. We've got something special going up in Rhinelander with Ryan from Rhinelander at Country Tires. Uh, where do you see that? It's going to be something spectacular. So until the next episode, like, share, subscribe. Please do leave a comment. It helps build our channel. Flower Gold Wizards, out. Another one.